This lesson teaches you how to set up an AI agent that will respond to emails for you using your existing knowledge articles or website info. Why this is important is because if you're spending hours collectively on customer support or, or user questions, then you can significantly save on that time simply by setting up this simple agent automation once and let it handle all the basic questions that people have. So to illustrate how it will work, I will act as the customer. I have that automation currently set up on my Gmail account and I will ask it a question. I will click send and you can see in a bit that this will now capture that under the hood. And now the webhook has received that information. Perplexity, which is our AI agent, has summarized a reply for that question and now it is sending an email back to that customer. So now if I go back to my customer email account, you can see that I already received a reply to that question that I sent. So the name that I'm using for this one is Hugh First. And you can see that the automation was able to capture my name here and acknowledge me correctly. It has a fixed text that just says, thank you for contacting the company but then it has this portion, which is the direct answer to the question that I posted, which is basically if I can bring tables and chairs to the venue. And because I linked our agent to our policy, which is available on the website anyway, it was able to immediately answer that question correctly. So the reason why that's important is because it does allow your customers immediate answers to your questions, which just increases customer satisfaction and also reduces the time it takes to answer customer support tickets. And the way that you set it up is also quite easy. So that's how it works. The question is, how do you actually set it up? And there are basically three steps to it. So the very first step is for you to first make sure that you have a make.com account. So if you go to the link in the video description, you'll be able to get a link to make.com and signing up is free. So go ahead and just make that. And when you're in your dashboard, just click on create a new scenario here at the top right. And to make this super easy, I uploaded the blueprint on the video link in the description. So what you do with that is just to click on more here at the bottom, click, click on import blueprint and choose that file that was provided. So now that I have that file, I just click save and that will immediately load the automation for you. So that's step one already done. So step two is before we dive into these modules, what you just first need to do is to set up something in your email account of your choosing, the one that will send the email replies. So the way that you do that is as follows. If I click on a webhook, click on create a webhook, you name it uh, whatever you want, email autoresponder webhook. And then you can see it gives you this string, which is sort of like an email address. And you copy that, click on copy address to clipboard and click on OK. So what you need to set up is an auto forwarding system so that all the emails that you receive in your customer inbox gets forwarded to that webhook that we just copied. So I will show you how to set it up on Gmail, but this may vary for you if you're, for example, using a, uh, a webmail account. So I will just link a tutorial on how to do that separately. And because most people have a Gmail account, I will show how it will work on Gmail and it will be roughly the same for other email providers as well. So the first thing you need to do is go on settings, see all settings, go to forwarding and POP IMAP, and click on add a forwarding address. And what I will do is paste this webhook, which looks like an email account. And before I click on next, what I want to do is go to our make.com scenario and just make sure that this webhook is turned on. How do I do that? Basically do a right click click run this module only and you can see that it is now waiting for information to be sent to it. 
and I'll show why that's important in a bit. So if I go back to Gmail, I click on Next. Google will ask me to verify that I want to forward to this email, which I will proceed. And it says here that a confirmation link has been sent to this webhook to verify permission. So the reason why we turn on that webhook is so that we can receive that verification link. And what I want to do in order to verify is just go to text. And you can see here Google's message to me. And what I want would be this URL, which is going to be the link that you would copy, put it in your address bar, paste, and just click on Confirm. Now it says here that my email account can forward to this webhook, which is great. So what you want to do is go back to Gmail, click on Refresh once, because then that will confirm the fact that you can now forward mail to this webhook. And the way that you make sure that is true is by looking at this and seeing that that webhook that you copied is available as an option here. If it's not there, then click on Refresh for Gmail again. So now that you have that webhook verified, you then want to actually set up that function to forward from your email into this webhook. And the way you do that here is to go to Filters and Block Addresses, click on Create a New Filter, and in the subject line, type in New Inquiry. So now this may vary depending on the email and the form that you are using, but for most forms, whenever a customer submits that form, the subject line of that email would start with something like new inquiry. So what this filter will do is basically to capture all emails that starts with new inquiry in its subject. And that may vary for you. So for this piece, it really depends on how you are receiving your emails and what is the subject line for each of those. I will set that filter up. I will create a filter. And for the corresponding action, what I want to do is to forward it to that webhook that we just created. So click on that one. I will create a filter, continue to whatever verification is needed. And now you can see that I have that filter running. So the way you can test this is by going back to make, right clicking on the webhook module and click run this module only. And then if I go back to a secondary email account, the one that we will use to act as a customer, I will try and contact myself. And you can see here with a question, can I bring food? And then because this one starts with that subject line that we just created a filter for, when I hit send, what happens under the hood is that the Gmail filter will capture that, detect that it should be forwarded to the webhook because it has new inquiry in its subject line, and then the webhook will receive it from its side. And you can see it has done just that. It just received the email, that question that I have, as well as the text contained in the email body. And you can see this is the email address I used. So we have all that information captured. So that's step two, now done. Now step three is just to set up these two remaining modules, which is a simpler process, I would say. What you just need to do is to click on each of these and make sure that they are running properly. So if I click on perplexity, you can see there's already pre-filled information here. And what perplexity is, it's basically an AI agent, a language model similar to ChatGPT with the benefit of being able to access the content of a specific website that you provide to it. So if in case this is your first time using perplexity, you first need to click on add and you need to insert your API key here. So the way I get that is if I go to perplexity.ai, I'll provide the direct link in the video description. I go to my settings and I click on API. And then once you have this set up, then you'll be able to get that API, which is a long string of text that you just copy into make.com. It does require you now to set up a payment method and it's very cheap. Like 
two dollars worth of credits will allow you to test this one up with already hundreds of scenario runs. So it's not a big blocker, hopefully for most people. Now with that set up, everything else here should be almost ready for you. No need to change the model there, but you would most likely need to change some of the content here. So just to take you through it, how perplexity works is through prompting similar to ChatGPT. And right now, this is the prompt that I am giving it. What it says is, I want this agent to use the content here as your basis of truth. So you can see that right now I have it linked to this website because for this exercise, we're acting as the customer support of the Botanic Gardens of Sydney. And this is an example website that is ideal because it's an FAQ page. So it has all the information around every potential question of a customer. So this is a web page that you would need ideally have a knowledge article or a knowledge base that you can link back to perplexity. It doesn't have to be neatly summarized like this one. Even just a hidden web page with a lot of text will do as long as that info is correct. Because then what perplexity will do is use that as the basis of truth for its answer to the customer. These ones you don't need to change anymore. Basically, it gets the subject of the email from the webhook, it gets the actual email of the customer, and it gets the name of the person they are replying to. So that's all set up. This section is just to give it a task, which is to create an email reply following the format below. And you don't need to change all those refining statements anymore. But this one, you can change, and you probably will need to change, because what it does is directly input the fixed text portion of the email. So it has a portion on saying hi to the sender, a portion around taking them for contacting your company. So you can change this one to your group. And this piece is really up to you if you want to take this approach. But because there's such a variety of questions that you may get from a customer, it's probably best to do it this way, at least for this client, where we just say that we will get back to their question shortly. But in the meantime, we do have our chatbot called Roy for the Royal Botanic Gardens to summarize this reply using the policy and the FAQ page that we have provided it. And you don't need to change up this part anymore. It's basically instructing the agent to insert a summary reply to the email using that source of truth link. And I just have some refining prompts here that I added after testing it a few times. And then a final sign off, probably change this one as well. Best regards from your team. And that's it. Click on OK. And that is perplexity done. Now the last piece, obviously, is to send back that email back to the customer. And if you click this module, most of these are once again set up for you. But what you need to do is to make sure that your email account is added here. So now again, this varies depending on the email platform you're using. So I'll just illustrate how to do it for Gmail. So if I click on add, in my experience, it's better to use this Microsoft OAuth. If I click on save, it will take me to an Outlook. And the reason why we're using Outlook is because Gmail is kind of under lock and key when it comes to these things. So it's actually much better to use Outlook for the sending portion. So that's what I will illustrate. And when I sign in here and follow the steps, then I'd be able to use that for my sending connection. Now, when I first tried it, it did take a while to reflect the connection. So for the first few tries, it ran into some errors. But what I advise you to do is just give it a few minutes to an hour or so, and it should work without problems. If you find any issues, just let me know and we can troubleshoot it. So the rest of these are pretty simple and straightforward. No need to change those things anymore. Save message after sending. Obviously, we need to find the email address where we need to send it back to, which we just get from that webhook. And this subject line, I just have a fixed text, which is very common for most auto replies anyway. Thank you for contacting us. And then for the content, uh, click on plain text so that 
the formatting from Perplexity AI will be kept. And we just get the content that we have from that piece. Click on OK. So now the way that you test out if this actually works is if you do a right click, click on Run This Module Only, and then type an email address here. So I will try with my mockup customer account. And you can see that it succeeded. This is what it sent. And if I go back to my customer account, I now have this empty email because I just tested it. And it was from zero minutes ago, which is the one we just sent. Perfect. So now we have everything set up. So that's step three now done. And we're actually complete. So you just want to test that this works. What you want to do is make sure this schedule setting is set to immediately as data arrives, because then you would be able to trigger this scenario whenever data arrives to this webhook, which is what you want. So if I click on Exit Editing, click on Save Changes, click on Refresh once just to make sure that all changes are saved. So now with that refreshed, the other thing you want to make sure is that your scenario is turned on so that the webhook can capture it. So now if we go back to our mockup customer email, we can send an email to this customer inquiry account with the subject line that is fitting the filter requirements to test it. And you can see here, I am just asking it if I can bring drinks to the event. I click on send. And what should happen in a bit is the webhook should capture that. And you can see that it was able to get that information, pass it on to Perplexity to create an email autoresponse, and send an email back. So now if I go back to my customer email, you can see that it provided an email back to me with the fixed text, as well as this response from Perplexity that answers my question using the FAQ page that we provided it, which is actually correct and quite informative. So there. If you just leave this scenario on, what it will now do is capture all of those email inquiries that you get on a daily basis and respond to them in turn with useful information from your customers using the website information that you just provided it. But it's really powerful and builds a lot of customer trust and affinity towards your company because you're able to answer questions so much better and show that you're integrating AI and automation in your workflow in order to serve them better, which is a win-win for everyone. So if you like this lesson, please give a like and subscribe. It helps us a lot. And if in case you want to capture and get all the resources that I just provided here, as well as the links and the blueprint, head over to the link in the description that will take you to our community which is a growing community where people who are all passionate about AI and automation are helping each other out. We have a lot of lessons here for everyone and upcoming ones as well. And you can see if I open one of these lessons up, it has all the resources as well as the blueprint, which is available for everyone here. So join the community if you want to upskill and not be left behind with everything related to AI agents and automation. Till next time, thank you.